<laughs> no excrement, there I was, barrels bound. I heard that they were meeting, and I was feared, for my armor wasn't close, and I realized that heralds, when they come to a critical mass, things will happen. Because if words and language and things are how we relate to the world, when all the wordsmiths get together, lo and behold, because things are going to change. <laughs> Carry it. They started the meeting off by decided, by trying to figure out who could say Oye louder than everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to dip too. But they decided Ingus didn't look pompous enough to be their spokesperson. So they kept looking and were trying to find other ways to find who could be the most pompous herald of all. And there he was, standing in the corner, a coronet miles high dangling with every gold object, period or not, off his kit. And so he let out an oye so loud, the entire site and the next three counties overheard him. And... Sorry. Oh, yeah! <laughs> loud, forceful, and musical. Oh, the pompous herald chosen by the company plucked from his cornet a golden tuning fork <laughs> and struck it on the head of his neighbor. <laughs> That's all I can hear after that. <laughs> and then the Dark Lord of the Sith came in and just couldn't believe his eyes or his ears for that matter. He said, this is too good. We need to document this. And if anybody knows our Dark Lord, he don't document it. No. <laughs> For what? They decided they needed to open the contest up farther, though, to have heralds from other parts of the country compete. So they called a herald from Meridies, and he came forth and shouted, Hey y'all, hey y'all, hey y'all! <laughs> and they called forth the herald from Crown Heights. He shouted, Oy vey, oy vey! <laughs> And the Jewish herald was so renowned for his uh, interesting interpretation of Oye that they offered him position of head nebish. And he was uh, so, so pleased with his new position that he offered to buy Manischewitz for everyone. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the corner, there was a small, retiring young woman who kept, it, look, it appeared as though she was saying, oh yeah, but no one heard anything coming out of her mouth. But slowly, around the corners of the meeting, dogs started appearing. <laughs> Flocking silently to her side, her silent cry of <laughs> Okay, then came the representative of Drachenwald. Und sie sagte laut, Hör auf! Ah! Ich bin der Einzige, der das am besten machen kann. And everybody looked at, what? <laughs> she does that regularly. Watch out for her. <laughs> oh, you want a translation? What's the matter? You guys only speak one language? Curious. And so they translated into ancient high blecht. <laughs> but they didn't understand that either. They tried Upper Slobovian, still no luck. The Drakenwald Herald was disgusted at the complete ignorance of his fellows, only speaking this tawdry English language, which goes down other dark alleys and mucks other languages for their grammar. <laughs> and so decided, well, I will take mercy on you and translate. Daria. My lords, my ladies, our good representative from the kingdom of Drakenwald wishes you all to know that it is now time for lunch. <laughs> and at this point, with all of the noise and the oye and the rumbling of the halls, a great avalanche started. 
and rocks fell, and everyone died. <laughs> Morgan, give us a moral. <laughs> It is quite the poor herald who cannot make their destiny avoid the falling of the rocks. <laughs>